Hello everyone and welcome. This is the second part of this workshop. In part one, we did a quick explanation of OmniDrive robots and built a very basic four motor and four wheel robot like this. We then created a simple program that used hard coded functions with set motor speeds to steer the robot in each of the four or eight or 12 different directions we wanted the robot to travel. Now I wanna build on that knowledge and the vector maths concepts we've covered and incorporate it into a single maths algorithm and function that allows us to give our robot full 360 degrees of directional movement. To do that, we're gonna use a special maths function called cos or the cosine function. Now don't freak out if you're one of those people who break into a sweat every time someone starts talking about sine, cos and tan, because I'll attempt to make a really visual explanation which should help anyone to understand what COS is, what it does, and how we can use it in a really practical way in a steering program. If you skip part one, it contains instructions on how to um, build and set up the, the robot that we're using. So if you need those, head back to the first video. All right, for a quick overview, we've got our omnidirectional robot, which can move in two dimensional space. So it can move forwards and backwards or left and right or any combination in between. To be precise, we're using motors A and C to move the robot forwards and backwards along the Y axis or relative north and south. In contrast, we've got motors B and D allow us to move the robot left and right along the X axis or relative east and west. So together, we're gonna to use the cos function to make a speed and direction calculation for each of the four motors which in combination will allow us to drive the robot in any of the 360 degrees of direction. So now I wanna have a quick go at explaining what the cosine function calculates and how we're gonna use it. The cosine of the angle theta, theta is the little symbol down there between the um, green and the red lines. And we can calculate the, the cosine of that angle calculates the ratio of the length of the adjacent side, in our case, the red line, over the longer length of the hypotenuse, i.e. the green line. Importantly, in the first quadrant of the Cartesian plane, cosine will give us a, value, a positive value between zero to one, which we can multiply by the speed we wish to travel. Now, the blue line, which I've just added, it completes the right angle triangle and is on the opposite side of the angle theta that we are concerned with. So, now, if the red line represents motor A and C, then the, and the uh, heading north, and the blue line represents the relative speed of motors B and D heading east. So if both motor speeds are proportionally equal relative to each other, the robot should head off at 45 degrees in the direction of the green arrow. So to repeat, we're gonna use the cosine angle to tell us how much force in terms of speed we want motors A and C to contribute to the robot's movement. While motors B and D are gonna work in combination to contribute a proportional force equivalent to the blue arrow. So all this in combination sends us off in the direction of the green arrow. Now, you can see there, as I've changed the angle and we've moved it up, you can see there it's now um, at an angle of 10 degrees. You can see the green, the, the green line has remained the same length, but the red line has got longer, okay? So we're gonna use more of that speed to head in that direction. We'd use more of the red, you know, with, with the motor A heading in that um, north direction would um, we'd use more um, speed from that motor. And motor B, on the other hand, you can see the blue line's got shorter, okay? We'd use less speed from motor B and that would allow us to head in that sort of direction of 10 degrees, okay? Then, interestingly, when we get to cos zero, so if we were heading directly north, in that case, we don't want motor B to make any contribution and we've got motor A running full speed in that sort of north direction. All right. Now, a few, to, to sort of reinforce what's going on and get into a bit of relatively simple maths, 
we'll um, we'll do a couple more examples. So if we've got the motors here, so we've got motor A heading along that um, that line, and cos zero, cos zero equals one, and so we're going to have the motor run at motor A at a hundred percent speed. Now, if we were going fifteen degrees, cos fifteen equals zero point nine six. So at that we have it motor A running at 96% of its speed. And then again, another example, say at a, we, 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 you can see each time we're getting more and more blue line added in, and that gives us, pushes us more over towards the east, and the red line's getting shorter as we go. At um, uh, If theta is the angle 30, we've got cos 30, we're getting 0 0.86, and you can see the numbers coming down, moving away from one towards zero. Okay, and then we want motor A working at 86 speed. Now, what does that look like in practical terms, the calculation we need to make? Okay, if we set our maximum speed at 50 for motor A, then the speed when we were going at um, in a direction of zero or north would be, we'd want our motor A at 50% speed. You can see there 100 times, 100% 100 times 50. And the when we were traveling at 15 degrees, we'd want to, we'd get a, a value of 96. So we want our um, 96 times our maximum speed of 50 equals 48. And then at 86 times 50, you can see our speeds are starting to drop down as our angle gets large, as, a, as we move more towards that 90 degrees. Okay, and at 45 degrees, you can see the um, cos 45 gives us a 0.7 reading, which is 70%. And that would be 70% of that maximum speed that we're traveling. Okay. Note at this stage, we're not doing any calculations for motor B. I don't want to confuse you. I just want to deal with what we're doing with motor A. And at 60, um, at, at um, that angle of 60, then we've got the motor working at half speed. All right. And then at zero, you can see we've got, we're going to have motor A basically turned off and not running. Now, this gets really interesting when we go beyond 90 degrees. What you find is, cos 110 equals negative 0.34, a negative 34%, which works out perfectly because then our motor starts turning backwards for us, which is what we really want. So it's really helpful in that regard. Okay, so just to understand how motor A works, okay, we've got, and, and this is sort of now we're looking at, as we move the angle beyond that sort of, first quadrant okay where we're working from one to zero at 90 degrees now we're looking at what how does it affect the motor all the way around so you can see up here we're all familiar with this when cos equals zero it's one so the motor speed uh, if the maximum motor speed is 50 then it will tr the motor will travel in a forwards direction at a speed of 50. if we move it over to cos 90 we get a value of zero um, or if we're heading at the angle of 90, cos 90 equals zero, and therefore motor A stops. And in the middle there, we had it at uh, cos 45 equals 0 0.7, so the motor speed would be 35. Now, in the other quadrants, if we go right down the bottom, and I mentioned before, at cos at 180 is the opposite, it's 180, directionally 180 degrees opposite to cos zero, cos 180 will give us a negative one which means our motor will be full speed in reverse. Okay, and part way in between, cos, so 45 degrees um, away from that, um, halfway between um, 90 degrees and 180 degrees is 135, and that will give us negative 0 0.75. And that will give, give us a speed of negative 35. And if we go over the other side, at the opposite of cos 90 is cos 270, which also works out as zero. So we don't, if we're heading directly to the um, to the east or at an angle of 270, we won't want any motors A and C making any contribution to the direction of the robot. It'll all be motors B and D. And so in between that, we've got a negative speed there if we're heading backwards at, um, at uh, an angle of 225. And it'll be the same up top there in that second quadrant of the Cartesian plane, where at say 315 degrees, we'd be heading off at, um, a, we'd be wanting a, contribu a, a contribution to the direction of about 35.
brake motor A turning at a speed, forward speed of 35. All right. Now, do you understand? Now, now, we've sort of dealt with motor A so far. How do we deal with motor C? And this is a, we've got a sort of a simple but tricky concept here where essentially motor C is, we're going to be using the same as motor A, except everything gets flipped around 100 and deg 180 degrees. So you can see here, if we flip the motor around and we just move the whole thing 180 degrees. So when we're wanting motor A to go in a forwards direction at say 50, to 50 um, speed, we'll want motor C going in a backwards direction at 50, which will mean they'll both head in a north direction, if you like. Okay, and interestingly, we can do the same with motors B and D. We just have to, rather than adding 180 degrees to it, and this might be something you come back to, if we're trying to control, if, if we're referring to where motor B sits, then you just have to add 90 degrees from zero to our value. This is a, is a really tricky concept and, um, and it might be worth coming back, revisiting this after we've done some of the coding associated with it. And then the last motor, motor D, down at the bottom, just needs a, um, ha have the original directional value manipulated around by 270 degrees. And hopefully this will make sense to you after we have a look. So we might jump now to the, um, to the coding section. Okay, now what we want to do is start producing an algorithm that allows us to, to program the robot to move it off in any direction. First thing we're going to do is grab a my block. So I'm going to come down and make a my block and we'll call this um, direction. Okay, so this, this is our my block, same as what we used before. We're going to input a variable as well. We're going to call this um, direction as well. So inside, so hopefully this will make sense in a moment. So we'll just save that. Okay, come down. All right. And we've got this block here that we're starting and I'm just going to attach that there when the program starts. Now, what we want to do is come up and grab our motors. Okay. And we're going to set the speed of motor A, first of all. Okay. And we're going to make a little calculation. Once we've set the, the speed of motor A, we then want it to move forwards. Okay. So if you remember, we have to go down and we have to make a calculation about, based on the angle that we put in. So if we wanted it to head off in zero, uh, zero direction, and we also want to grab a an operator here we've got here let me find it ah here down here okay we've got this particular operator and we can grab out of here we can grab this direction value so what it's going to do for the moment okay there's a little bit more manipulation we need to do in a second but we're going to take we don't want we don't want the absolute value we want the cosine value of the direction that we put in. Okay, now that's going to give us a value. Let's say it's between zero and um, if the, the direction is zero to 90, it's going to give us a value somewhere between um, zero and one. So we need to do another calculation on that where we multiply it by the speed. So if I come back up, grab that, pop that in there. Okay. And suddenly, now there's another variable. Now you can see that I, I've mucked up my um, uh, my block or my function. Okay, I'm going to come back in. I want to edit it again this time, and you can do it really nicely. You just come in here and add another input. Okay, this time I want it to be speed, and that's going to be. So we've now got in our direction block, we've got the direction that we we've got to put in a value for the direction we want to travel in. And we've also got to put in our, what we'll, we'll roughly refer to as our maximum speed for the moment. So I then want to take the cos value. And if we increase the size of this slightly, it might help. Okay. And you can see here, 
we've now got this calculation within a calculation here. I'm getting the value of the cos of the direct the value for cos of the direction. I'm multiplying it by the speed. Now, let's just run a little test and see if this works. If I'm heading in zero, do, uh, heading zero is north, so zero degrees, I could put in 360 and it should travel with motor A. Okay, and you can see here as I hold up, my motor A is actually, motor A here is spinning as it should be. So hit stop. Okay, what we're going to do next is we'll duplicate this. Okay. Okay, we can get rid of that. And instead of referring, doing it with a single block, we're going to do it with multiple blocks where we address the motors. And I'll do them all at the moment because we're going to fill those in after. All right, so now we've got um, motor A and motor B. Okay, and if I run this now, okay, and I've got to I've got to adjust and add in one more value, and this is part of that um, uh, part of that option where we have to add ninety degrees to the value we're we're giving um, we're passing to the um, direction block or direction function. So because motor B is 90 degrees, or in fact, what we should do first of all, it will make more sense if we make it C. And I take this direction and add 90 degree, 180 degrees to it. So they should work in uni uniform now. So if we jump to the and run this, you can see here the robot, it should move. Okay. So if I switch off B and D motors. Okay. So at the moment, when I run that, you can see it runs. All right. Okay, what we now want to do is duplicate these. Okay, we'll duplicate again and then throw away the excess. Okay, so we now want motors B included in and we're going to have motor D included in as well. Okay, now motor B is 90 degrees. Rotate it around, and the other one is 270 degrees. And now, when we run this, okay, you can see we're getting a value there. And when we change the direction, and let's say I want it to go 45 degrees. And you can see nothing is happening there. And hopefully you can see what the issue is. I haven't included those instructions. I haven't added that into the, the motor instructions. So this time around, when I run it, it heads off in 90, 45 degrees, as it should. If I change this, instead make this um, uh, 225 degrees, so the opposite direction when we run it you can see now it's heading down in this direction okay and that is basically the beginnings of our our program if you like our um, it's our block that we can type in any direction here so 180 degrees and it will go backwards so there and um, the other the other thing you can do is if we add in a um, another really nice feature is if we edit this again we can add in yet another parameter and we can put in rotation and rotation 
is a, another where we're adding another value in. We're making these sort of more complex as we're going, but adding in really rich features as well. Where we add in, we do that calculation for speed. And you can see here, I'm just playing around. Oh, hopefully, I yep, good, I haven't dropped it. Okay, and then we're going to add in rotation there as well. And if we duplicate that, so we might throw these ones away. We might, and just for consistency, I'll also do it with the first one. So that's that motor is facing zero degrees. I'll duplicate. This one is at 180 degrees. And duplicate again. This one is at 270 degrees. And if we throw in, and this is something that gets really helpful for people as well. If we throw in, we can reset the yaw sensor and grab this value here, pitch. And essentially we can use it. So if we slow this down, to say uh, 20, so it won't run away on us so much. And when we do this, uh, has, oh, I've got, I've got a, you can see that the, the, the actual coding is, should work. I'll just stop it. But one of the problems I've done is I haven't included it in the control loop. So forever. So if we pop it inside that and all our coding, you can see what, actually no, it doesn't change anything. Oh, that's why, because we haven't used the your angle. You can see here, just coding live on the go. You can see it's always trying to set itself up facing the right direction. So always, this, this is one way you could keep your robot always facing the goals that it's intended to, intended to go to. All right. So you can see there are um, a couple of examples of some really basic, um, or, you know, quite clever, um, little algorithms that allow you to steer the robot for a um, you know, rubber, rubber cup soccer robot. And, um, you know, really very sort of simple algorithm, which uses some really beautiful maths just to allow you to control a robot. Now, lots of people won't, um, when they see your robot moving, won't really understand the, the, the beauty of the maths that are involved, if you like. But you will, when you ha having coded it, understand how with such a small amount of code we can control, um, you know, a relatively complex um, little little robot or, or, or movement system. So that's all I want to cover for the moment. We might do some more about different sort of techniques you can use in soccer, but that'll do for the moment. Okay, cheers.